Good morning, Grade Five. Welcome back to Grade Five Mathematics class. How are you all doing today? Let's learn a method called unitary method today. This is a method to find the value of a required number of units given the value, the total value of a few number of units of the same object. So, unitary method is a method of finding the value of a certain number of units by finding the value of one unit. Here one unit means one object. So let's get to know the method using some examples. So let's see a question here. If the cost of 5 pence is rupees 50, then find the cost of 8 pence. So what is given in the question? The cost of 5 pence is given and that is equal to rupees 50. So from this, you are asked to find out the cost of 8 such pence. How do we find it? See, we know the value of 5 pence. And from this total value, we can find out the value of 1 pen. How? If we divide the total value by the total number of units, you will get the value of 1 unit or 1 pen. So if you know the value of 1 pen, you can easily find out the value of 8 pence, right? So let's see the steps. So the cost of 5 pence is equal to rupees 50. And from it, we can write the cost of 1 pen is equal to rupees 50 by 5. So the total value divided by the total number of units. And we get the value of 1 unit as rupees 10. Now we are asked to find out the value of 8 such units or 8 pence. So the required number of units is equal to 8. So the value of the required number of units is equal to the number of required units into the value of 1 unit. So that is equal to 8 into the cost of 1 pen. That is 8 into rupees 10 which is equal to a total of rupees 80. So 5 pence costed rupees 50. From that we found out the value of 1 pen and hence we found out the value of 8 pence and that is equal to rupees 80. So I hope this is clear to you. Now let's see one more example. 40 people can sit in 4 cabs. How many people can sit in 19 such cabs? So what all data are given in the question? So 40 people can sit in 4 cabs. From this we can easily find out how many people can sit in 1 cab, right? And hence we can easily find out how many people can be seated in 19 cabs. So let's see the steps. See number of people who can sit in 4 cabs is equal to 40 people and from that we can find out the number of people who can sit in one cap is equal to 40 divided by 4 that is the total number divided by the number of units. So 40 by 4 is equal to 10. So in one cap 10 people can be seated. Now how do we find out number of people who can sit in 19 caps? The required number of caps into the number of people that can be seated in one cap. So that is equal to 19 into this 10. 19 into 10 people. And that is equal to a total of 190 people. So in 19 such caps, a total of 190 people can be seated. So I hope you are clear with the two examples we worked out here. We solved these two questions using the unitary method. So in unitary method, there are two steps to find out the value of a certain number of units. First you will find out the value of a single unit. Then you will multiply the required number of units with the value of a single unit. So let's see that again. Step 1 is finding the value of one unit that is divide the total value by the total number of units. And then step 2 is finding the value of the required number of units that is multiply the value of one unit by the required number of units. So I hope this method is clear to you. Now we will see the question from Target Olympiad which is in page number 187. So let's read the question. Raj can buy one pineapple and three mangoes or two pineapples for the money he has. Vishal can buy two pineapples and two mangoes for rupees 40 from the same shop. How much money does Raj need to buy three pineapples and two mangoes? 
So what all are given in the question? See, Raj has got some money with him. And with the money he has, he can either buy one pineapple and three mangoes or two pineapples. Now, another one, Vishal. Vishal can buy two pineapples and two mangoes for rupees 40 from the same shop. Now, it is asked to find out how much money does Raj need to buy three pineapples and two mangoes from the shop. So, at the moment with the money he has, he can only buy either one pineapple and three mangoes or two pineapples. Which means the price of one pineapple plus three mangoes is the same as that of two pineapples. So, from all the data given in the question, let's see how we can solve this one. So, first let's suppose that the price of a pineapple be P, capital P and the price of a mango be M and in the first sentence it is given that he can buy either one pineapple and three mangoes or two pineapples which means the value of one pineapple plus three mango is equal to the value of two pineapples. So from that we can write an equation like this one pineapple plus three mangoes is equal to two pineapples the price the value. Now again it is mentioned that Vishal buys two pineapples and two mangoes for rupees 40 from the same shop. So there we have another equation. For the ease of calculation, I am going to name these equations as equation 1 and equation 2. Now in the question, we are asked to find out the money needed to buy three pineapples and two mangoes. So to calculate the total amount needed, we need to find out what is the cost of one pineapple and one mango. So how do we find it? See, from the first equation, we can write 3 mangoes is equal to this 2 pineapples minus 1 pineapple. 3 mangoes means the price of 3 mangoes. The price of 3 mangoes is equal to the price of 2 pineapples minus the price of 1 pineapple. So we are taking this 1p to the right side. So there it becomes 2p minus 1p. So we get 3m is equal to 2p minus 1p. 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. Hence, we can write 3m. The price of 3 mangoes is equal to 1p or the price of 1 pineapple. And let that be equation 3. Now, let's substitute this equation in equation 2. Let's see how. See, we know 2p plus 2m is equal to 40. And we got 3m is equal to 1p. So, instead of this 2p, we can write 2 into, instead of this p, we are going to write 3m because 3m is equal to 1p. So, 2p becomes 2 into 3m plus 2m is equal to 40. So, 2 into 3m means it is equal to 6m. So, here it becomes 6m plus 2m. So, 6m plus 2m is equal to 40. 6 plus 2 is equal to 8, hence 8m is equal to 40 or you can write m is equal to 40 divided by 8 and that is equal to 5. So, the price of one mango is equal to 5 rupee. So, there we got the price of one mango. Now, from this how do we find out the price of one pineapple? We know the price of three mangoes is equal to the price of one pineapple. So, substituting the value of one mango in this equation, we get the price of one pineapple or one p is equal to 3 into rupees 5, the value of one mango. So, that is equal to 15. So, we get the value of one pineapple is equal to rupees 15. So, right now, we have got the price of one pineapple, the cost of one pineapple is equal to rupees 15 and the cost of one mango is equal to rupees 5. Now, we have to find out what is the total amount needed to find out 3 pineapples and 2 mangoes. So, there we have to substitute the value of each of this. So, substituting the amounts, 3 into 15, the price of 1 pineapple plus 2 into rupees 5, the price of 1 mango. That is equal to 3 into 15 is rupees 45 plus 2 into 5 equal to rupees 10. 
So that is a total of rupees 55. So Raj needs a total of rupees 55 to buy 3 pineapples and 2 mangoes from the shop. So right now you have solved this question using unitary method. First we found out the value of 1 unit of pineapple and 1 unit of mango and then we found out the value for a certain, the required number of units. So I hope this question is clear to you. Now you have to go through these topics from page numbers 185 to 188 of your textbook. Then you have to complete the exercise 12.4 which is in page number 186. And in the same page you can see a HOTS question, high order thinking skills question and, and there is one more from the category, high order thinking skills question from page number 188. So we have to work out these two and there is a my project activity in 188. So go through all these activities, finish all the activities, then take your picture and do send us through tips. So children, I hope the concept we learned today is clear to you. That's all for today. We'll see you in the next class with a new topic. Till then, bye.